pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today is uh, Tuesday, February the 17th, 2015, 6 p.m. This is a regular meeting of the Greensburg Water Board. Uh, I have a roll call on it. Chuck? Here. Tony? Here. Frank is absent. Iris? Here. Robin? Present. Uh, minutes from January 20th meeting were distributed in your packet. Is there any objections or corrections to those minutes? Not, they will be accepted. Uh, new business Westward Hydraulic Model. Okay. That's all me. Good evening. I'm Linda Sanders, and I'm the visit development for Wessler Engineering. And I'd like to thank Rick for having us here tonight to talk to you about your water distribution system hydraulic modeling. Just a real quick information about Wessler Engineering. We are located in Indianapolis. We are a civil engineering firm with about 60 employees. And 72% of our business comes from the water, wastewater, storm water drainage. So we work all over the state of Indiana, and we are a family and employee-owned company. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Stan Diamond. He is a senior project manager with Wessel Engineering, and he'll probably take about 20 minutes to go over this project, and then hopefully at the end, you can ask it for any time during the, his presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Rick, and the uh, board for giving us this opportunity uh, to talk to you about uh, your distribution system uh, modeling and also um, something that's, uh, that I'm passionate about. Um, I started working uh, about 25 years ago with the communities doing their uh, uh, planning and hydraulic modeling and so forth. And I ran across some information from the insurance service office uh, about hydrogen flow testing data. And that information was very helpful in the modeling process, but I, from the, in the process of, of reviewing the data and getting to understand how it works, I learned that it has a, a potential for impacting um, your community's insurance rates. And so I made it my business to uh, understand what was going on, and I've been uh, passionate about spreading the word about the hydraulic mod of the actual hydraulic testing of your system and the impact on the your rates throughout the community. As a matter of fact, in, in 1995, when I was education committee chair for the American Water Works Association, I put on uh, and led the effort to put on a program that contains some of the information we're sharing today. I've made public presentations that professional associations also promoting this information, basically to help communities and uh, distribution or superintendents make better decisions about their capital improvement planning economic development. So with that, I'll jump into this a little bit. The objective of this presentation will be to provide you with some information needed to improve your water system and position Greensburg for future economic uh, development. And what community decision makers and water utility managers really need to know um, is that your community's insurance rates are adjusted using information gathered by the insurance service office. ISO. And the ISO's Public Protection Classification Program rates communities on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being the highest and 10 being the lowest. And when they come into your community to rate your, your system, they look at three components. Your ability to handle and receive fire alarms gets 10%. Your fire department gets 50% of that rating, and your water department or water supply gets 40% system and they actually come into your community and rate your system and test your hydrants throughout the community at different locations um, and that's the information that I first ran across and started using for hydraulic modeling 
And basically, when they do that, they uh, select a particular site. In this case, it was a school at the end of a long water distribution main elementary school. And they established the needed fire flow that they would need for that particular, um, that particular structure. If it was multifamily residential with wooden and it was close, it would be a higher. If it was a school that doesn't have sprinkling systems, it would be uh, considerably high as well. They laid the test out, they set up the equipment, they actually perform the test, they calculate the discharge that they can have from that hydrant, and they ultimately determine the, they look at the supply limit because you may not be able to, to deliver water from your tank or your booster stations uh, at, at a higher rate. And then finally, they determine how many hydrants you have in that area that you can deliver that flow to, and that kind of impacts the rate as well, too. But basically what they do is they have a, a pressure observer located on a hydrant way down the line, um, and then they actually flow test the hydrant uh, that you see here, and they measure the flow from the hydrant, and they record the residual pressure while the the flow is going on, and they calculate what you can produce from that hydrant with, without lowering the pressure below 20 psi, which is a safe thing. Now, this is your uh, actual hydrant flow data uh, summary that the, the chief uh, provided to me with um, with Rick's and uh, permission. And basically, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, to you about that rating system that I provided for you in your packet, um, a, a, a list, a blown up list of that, so you can look at that, and also an, a, a map that shows um, where some of these locations are that we're going to talk about. But basically, if you'll look at um, uh, item number two, where they tested the, the uh, hydrants on, uh, for the Ridgecrest Apartments, that's up on Carver Street. Uh, they tested two hydrants in from Carver, and they projected that the needed fire flow over in this column over here, the needed fire flow in, in this column, um, right here, 2,250 for that particular location. When they tested the hydrant, they actually came up with it. They predicted you would be able to provide 850. Now that may be 850 gallons a minute. That may be because the main size in that development may be undersized. It may be that one of the, it may not be looped, so you're feeding from both ends. And it also may be that you might have a valve that was closed uh, under a fire condition at some point or a flow test, and it was never open. So you're only feeding from one way. So there may be multiple reasons why you can't meet that or produce that. But that, that uh, deficiency is one of the things that they look at in, in terms of defining your rates. And if you notice on the list, there are some other ones that I can point out. Uh, there's another one on number five, right here. It's a commercial on West, on Main, west of Somerset, which is west of the town out on 46. And there's some commercial developments out there, and that they actually indicate you need uh, 5A, a 3,000 gallon per minute. That's what they're going to rate you on. Anything above 5,000 needed fire flow, they discount. They don't even calculate using the calculations. But and you'll see you'll see two different number fives here. And 5A is what they rate you on, 3,000 gallons a minute. And out there, you're able to do 750 gallons a minute. And that may be because the main underneath the railroad out that direction may be smaller and not, not large enough or there may be some kind of restriction in the line or something of that nature. Um, but basically if you go through this list and look at these, these are challenges of, to your system that if, as a decision maker will, it's good for you to know about and, and take proactive measures to re resolve them in order to bring up your insurance rates. Of the list that we have here and the ones that are clouded, there's 16 overall locations that they did test on August 2012, and 12 of those who were unable to provide the needed fire flow that they want you 
they expect that you will be at that physical location. Now, some of those are fairly close, but there are some that aren't. So again, it's important information for you to understand and for Rick to understand, and for us to understand if we're to help you with the capital improvement plan. Now, here is the the actual um, results of your public protection classification rating. And here is the receiving and handling fire alarms. They rated you 8.4 out of 10. They rated your fire department 33 out of 50. And your water supply 24.8 out of 40. And so um, what they look at is then they look at the difference between your fire department and your water department. And they, and they have a divergence number. And the reason that's important and it's in there is if your fire department was terrific but your water supply was very poor, you've got a weak link. Your, the fire department's not going to be able to work. So they would increase the divergence and lower your overall rating. So it's important to understand that as you're trying to improve your system and improve your rating, that both the fire department and the water department have to work together to bring that rating up. So your overall rating, or your rating for, down here at the bottom, for uh, your fire department, it's a class four relative rating, and your water side supply is class four. And so your overall community classification is a four. Now what's that mean? Basically what that means is when your final number comes up, you're about a 65, so your, your public protection classification is a four. And as you move up, which means your systems and your your, capa your capabilities are improved, as you move up, um, you'll see the impact of that. Now this is Michigan City, which is another client that I've worked with for more than 20 years now, 25 years. And I've used just these kinds of information to work with their superintendent to model their system and identify deficiencies and help them resolve them so that now Michigan City can basically deliver 3,500 gallons throughout their community wherever it's needed for commercial and residential developments and so forth. And so what their rate, their last rating is, they did about the same, almost an eight for their receiving and firing, ha uh, handling fire alarms. Their fire department got a 33.6 out of 50, and their water supply got, got a 37.6 out of 40. So their, rate, their water supply was rated as a one, their fire department is a class four, and you can see this divergence because of that number being that far apart, their fire departments dragging them down and bringing their overall rating down. So their community classification rating is a three, okay? Now where do you stand your community with respect to the other communities in the state of Indiana? This is a graph from the ISO's webpage that shows the various um, spread of the, of the community ratings throughout the community. And you're in this class four, there are 121 other communities that are rated similar or better than yours, and then there's 55 in the class three, there's one in class two, and nobody within the state of Indiana has a class one rating. Now, this is where the, 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 the important information is, is if you're a class four, and you're able to increase the class three, the relative, the relative reduction in your insurance rates for commercial, industrial, residential, throughout your community could, could drop by uh, potentially 4%. And if you were able to raise your rating to two, you could raise your rating overall about 7%, which means, or you lower your insurance rates throughout the community. So, uh, again, it's important that proactive measures are, uh, are taken when you can to improve these ratings and bring your insurance rates throughout the community down. And that will in turn help to attract more um, economic development and, and so forth in the community. Now the proactive measures that you can take to improve your water system are to develop and enforce minimum main sizes, which you probably are already doing. But it's important that, uh, that as you're adding new developments, that you make certain that those mains within those developments and serving those developments are appropriately sized for the needed fire flow. Um, also, um, 
It's important to require that fire suppression systems uh, be provided in all new commercial, industrial, and institutional structures. If they have those fire suppression systems, the ISO takes them off the map and they don't and they don't ding their community and lower their insurance rate. So even if they're going through a major rehabilitation, the code would require them and could require them to put those in. Um, also to require review and approval of new developments, as I mentioned that them making certain that they have the appropriate size hydrants, the number of hydrants and the spacing is very important for continuing to maintain your, your um, classification. Enforcing the, spa the hydrant spacing requirements also is important. If you have them spread out too much, your rating will be more difficult to increase. Finally, updating your water distribution system hydraulic model is also a, a, a step that you can take to uh, understand your system more, and we'll get a little bit into that. And use your model to identify and address system deficiencies, to right-size new mains, and, and properly locate new treatment plants and storage tanks. And it's very critical that that, that information be utilized to, uh, again, make certain that you've improved your rating. And how, how do your existing hydraulic models uh, updated and used? If you, we usually start with an existing model, and then we would put in new mains, water mains, pumps, tanks. We would update and reallocate the average day demands over your entire system. Um, we would run simulations to verify the model uh, is working properly. And we'd run average and max day simulations to identify the deficiencies, like and to compare them against this kind of data. In Michigan City, we were actually able to compare their hydraulic model results, and we pointed out to the superintendent and, and said, you know, there are two areas here where this doesn't make sense. We say you can provide 3,500 gallons, and the ISO report says you can only do 1,500. Sure enough, one of them was a hydrant that was on a small main that they hadn't transferred over to a larger main and put through the intersection. And the other one was a busted 16-inch butterfly valve stem. They thought the valve was open and it was closed, and so they were all feeding from one direction. So we were actually able, through the modeling, to eliminate that, that deficiency, help them eliminate it. Now, once we get the existing system model working and so forth, it's important to create a future system model, and that's working with Rick and you to identify likely areas of, of development and make certain that the mains that you have and that when you add mains are appropriately sized to account for future development. You don't want to put in mains today and five years down the road if you add additional development further out because you can't actually provide the necessary flows to those future developments. So it's important that we, we model and look maybe out 20 years and say, okay, if we, if we develop these areas, what's the appropriate size for the mains and improvements that go out that direction. And we would update the future model. To update it, we would start with the existing model. We would update and reallocate those future average day demands around the system. We'd run the simulations and verify that it's working correctly. And we'd input proposed new water mains, pumps and tanks and so forth. And then we would run various scenarios to help you right size those uh, new components and to locate them properly. Now the cost to update your model and, a, and to actually do this modeling is significant, at, uh, but at the same time, the, the potential savings, if you right size one, your next water main extension, you don't put in, have to put in a water main, then you can recoup the cost of any modeling and the proper plan in, in the, in easily in the first uh, particular project. Um, in fact, in, in uh, Indianapolis, we helped a developer, the Brownsburg was telling them they needed to put a 24 inch main through their subdivision multifamily. We ran the model for them and confirmed that they could provide 3,500 gallons a minute throughout the system with a 12 inch main. And they went back to Brownsburg and they said, you know, our hydraulic modeling indicates that all we need is a 12 inch, and they were able to put that in and save significant dollars up front. The benefits of hydraulic modeling are a better understanding of how your system works. And I can, uh, can tell you from doing this for years and years that that can be very helpful in terms of um, what Rick has to deal with and, and improving um, his ability to operate. It's also a useful tool to identify system deficiencies, 
uh, identify needed system improvements, locate and right size new mains, locate new treatment plants and storage tanks. And then finally, capital improvement planning um, is extremely, uh, it's extremely beneficial. Now, ultimately, the goal when we go through and model this and work with you closely on the modeling and the capital improvements, our goal are to improve your capital planning to improve your water system operation, to increase your available fire flow throughout the community where it's needed so that you increase your rates, to maintain water quality because, maintain water quality because those, uh, you know, you may locate a tank on the perimeter of the community and you may not move the water in and out of that tank enough to, to keep the water fresh enough and that can become a problem. And then also, uh, ultimately, the goal is to lower your insurance rates and to attract new economic development through positioning so that you can attract new and grow green stuff. So, when Rick asked us to come down and present to you this information, we were excited about the possibility of helping you upgrade, update your model and to utilize it for your capital improvement planning. We have prepared a, a professional agreement for the services to do that that we'll uh, give to you this evening um, for your consideration. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the folks, unless you have a question. Um, oh. How can kids help this? Like, can we do anything about this? Or? How can you help this? The most important thing you could do is learn about your water distribution system and how it functions so that you can help um, in you can help the community in understanding and your your parents understanding how best to improve the system okay. and make it work. So thank you. Any other questions? There's probably a merit badge associated with the water, <laughs> water distribution modeling. So um, I was interested in uh, water early at an early age, but I'll turn it over to Linda. Well, now we just wanted to thank you for the opportunity today. And as you can see, Stan does have a passion for this. Water is a main emphasis of Western Engineering. We've been doing this. We celebrate our 40th anniversary this year. So uh, we've been doing this a long time and it helped a lot of communities across the state. So I hope you can see how valuable this information is to the city of Greensburg and then how it can help me continue to grow. So with that. Um, question. Uh, when you talk about saving uh, the community's insurance rates, are you talking the individual homeowner? What's, what, what type of insurance is community insurance? It's my understanding. It's my understanding that when you um, have your insurance updated on an annual basis, if you're an individual residential homeowner or you know you have a uh, multifamily residential or you have a commercial um, business or even an industrial business, your insurance rates are are determined in part by your class, your community's public protection classification. So if you can improve that, you can overall lower your insurance rates throughout the community. That's one the fire chief was supposed to be here today and something come up, so he was going to explain all that. I asked him to come. So. And I'm certain he, the chief is on, on top of his portion of it, and um, yeah, you know, generally he's, he's excited about it. So, I mean, I would like to have something as this to sit on my shelf. To, to, if, what I like about it is if somebody wants to locate on the northeast side of town, I can punch into this model, okay, we're gonna, they, they're going to need 1,500 gallons a minute punch the size of the main that's feeding that and tell me if, if I can supply it there or not. Uh, that's that's my biggest thing that I like about it. Even, uh, How do you use that? We have an engineer do it. This is something that I'll have to my benefit for economic development. So that's how I look at it, you know. And so when we have our meetings that says, hey, you know, we got a, a you know, a processing plant wanting to locate here, we have all the department heads together and, and Gary's office and hey, what's this look well right now I just look at it and say, Well is it a twelve inch? Because it's commercial, that's all I gotta go by. So 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 
are, are you, when you say an engineer, is it somebody that was a contract uh, with, or is, no. it, is it Gary no. Murray's position? No, okay. it's not even that. It's on whoever's built the facility. I mean, okay. they, they know what utilities are in there, and they're the ones that have to, you know, size it to, to make it work, I guess. But, you know, if they say, maybe, you know, maybe I'm looking at it more, it's, it's really not my problem. So, you know, so, it's more their problem, but so that's still a tool that I would have. So what's the process now? Somebody wants to relocate or put in a new business, and we need to know what what flow, what pressure, or whatever that body has. I mean, how do you determine what that is? Like? You've got to give them some standards to say, I will. here's your minimum what happens, standards. What happens is I'll get a call from their engineering company that says, hey, or you know, somebody's going to do the fire protection system, like on or what, hey, what kind of GPM do you have at, at this location? So I myself will go out or take somebody and we'll do a residual test like you just explained. You'll check the static on it, open another hydrant, check the residual, and then I send them that. That's the last I hear about. But I mean, I guess I'm not asking a question, but I have if, if, if a co company XYZ wants to come in and build a plan, do we have to give them, here's your minimum no. pressure standards? It's, it's, that's no, their, that's yeah, their problem. That's, 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 that's okay. their problem. What, what would normally happen would be that um, they would come in and indicate to you what they're going to construct and, and uh, the needed fire flow, some idea of the needed fire flow would need to be established and what kind of domestic water flow that they would need as well too. And then you would be responsible, the city would be responsible for extending the mains out to that location or determining whether or not they have the capability to provide that flow at this point in time, uh, and if not, what improvements might be necessary to do that. Now, typically that's done with modeling, and Michigan City and other communities will retain a firm like ours to update their model and, um, and to run scenarios that will enable you to determine what's the appropriate increases in, in, or what's the appropriate means or improvements that are necessary for that. It's not uncommon for once we develop a, a, or update a model to provide that information uh, or that model to a client like Rick, if he's interested in physically running the model and so forth, he would need to have the software and some training to be able to understand how to change it and how to modify it. But the, one of the modeling main characteristics that's important to it is allocation of demands throughout the system so that it, it, it reflects what the demands are in your system and how to, how to run that. And there are different versions of the model that you can run, the existing system, the future system, and um, as, as I explained a little bit too. So we would work with Rick to, um, to update it and provide what the information is necessary. Now, let me give you a little bit of background on how we got onto this. Is when we was taking our infuse for the river intake, we had actually standards like, hey, do you have a hydraulic model in your system? I'm like, no. Well, how do you do? You know, somebody wants to locate here. So they actually come back to meet with me and Gary Murray, what, three weeks ago, probably a month ago, I'm guessing. And uh, I was excited. You know, it's a, a tool that I have if somebody wants to, to locate here or whatever. So actually what happened is I was talking to Darren Thursday. Yeah. I was talking to Darren Thursday about the river intake and I said, oh, by the way, I got Wesley coming in to do a presentation on the hydraulic model. He said, Rick, it's already been done in 97. <laughs> so then I thought, what, well, you know, what? I mean, I didn't know I didn't have a clue. So but I called Stan back. I said, Stan, this is what the deal is. We already have a hydraulic model. So I think his presentation, to make a long story short, is to update what we already have is what we're looking at. And I'll start fresh off the bat. Is that, is that, that That's correct. correct and that? and uh, I will tell you that I've, uh, I know Darren. I've worked with Asian TV uh, on projects together. Um, I, I, I'm uh, pleased with his professional, his capabilities and so forth. So, um, you know, when we found out that, that there was a model, it will make the update of that process easier if that model is available and can be updated. Um, but uh, you know, I, it, it, it's my our understanding that it's been some seven or eight years since it's been updated and used. Um, 
why we were excited about the possibility of uh, assisting you with, with that process is it's, it's, a, it's a very effective tool and helpful tool for Rick and for you in your capital improvement plan. So we just want to make certain that you're getting the best use and the best you move forward in, with the right means and the right planning process. So, okay. Any other questions? I just want to know 
um, if I do have to pay $192, which is okay, where where is this coming from? Um, it was seven days after the new meters were put in. Um, my meters were tested. It says that they were fine, but that still doesn't explain where this 10,000 pounds of water is has gone. So I need some sort of answer. I feel like before I have to pay this water bill. Um, and I've, we've talked with um, Joe Springmeyer, who, like I said, was a landlord. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. We had any issues at that? No, we're not sure. work. Um, this is a couple weeks ago I worked on it. Um, is this the one you sent me on? We did some figuring on We figured out it was the commode. It had to be something larger than that. It's, and then you changed your mind that it could have come out. Talk to you about it. The last one I've seen that I worked on, it started like on a Saturday and it was shut off around they quit at like 11 o'clock on Monday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is yes. this the same one? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like okay, 239 gallons an hour. Yeah. So, yes. There's that There's no way. commode. Not that 239 gallons an hour. Um, I figured that up, and I think a commode is the most a commode can run at our pressure be about 44 gallons an hour. So it was almost like a garden hose, an outside stick or something ran for a day and a half, two days, whatever it was. This is what it looks like on the usage report. And you can, with the new meter system, which is why we got it, we can show you when you flush a commode, we can show when water's ran, we can. You know, that's that's what it's showing. So, you know, is the meter bad? The meter was sent in. It was tested um, by the company. It showed okay. I I don't have another answer besides somebody turned the outside spigot on without your knowledge, maybe, and it ran for a day and a half. And, Which we would have had a flood, right? I would think you would know it. <laughs> okay. I mean, ten thousand gallons of water. Yeah. We would have had a flood somewhere. I would think you would see the water. <laughs> But, but I don't know, I can't answer it. That's all I know. I'm just telling you, we know the facts. And it wasn't a commode at that GPM, so. Could it be like two or more commodes? Could be. If we had like four commodes <laughs> around there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could not find anything. We went back many times, and he's like, Rick said we sent the meter off to be tested. And it actually tested slow on the low flow, which would mean it, it's not testing at 100% on low flow. So. And then what other, my other concern is that mm -hmm. it went right after that weekend, it went right back to exactly where it was before. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Do you have any kind of sumps? Yeah, so we had our sump pump tested. Um, they tested their water here while they were there. Our sump pump actually has an alarm on it. So anytime it is too high, it sends a text to Joe Springmeyer and my husband. Um, well, what I'm wondering is, you know, if maybe you had a flow and it would have gotten in there and it would pumped out, you wouldn't see water right. in the place. So right. it's just possible. Yeah. They tested um, our sump pump, our water heater, um, we had two different people come, so I just... I think our, our dilemma is, you know, to figure this out, it's, the burden of proof is not on us. Absolutely. It, it, it's on you, and I don't know what, what we can do here as a board to, 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 to remedy that. Mm -hmm. We have policies in place to follow for you know, our adjustment guidelines. I don't know if we've done what we're supposed to do. And, the thing we have to do meters in place that's so we knew exactly where the problem was. I don't know if that gives us an answer to that. Not in Rick, no, is that I mean, we did not we we did have no other answers. I mean we didn't know where else to turn to to try to help mm -hmm. you know this or this or this. Mm -hmm. Um that water I, softeners, do they ever get stuck? Keep recycling, do you know, Rick? Right? Well, like after they would, that, they would have an overflow. I mean, when okay. it recycles, it's going to flush water through. So maybe, and I, I don't know how much of water can go, how much water can go through a water softener when it 
desire. So I can't answer that either. With that being said, I have had that happen in my house. I just, you know, and I don't want this to happen again <laughs> and have no answers. That, that was my other piece to this. Um, with the new years put in, and you saying, you know, there's going to be answers, and I'm going to know exactly where the water is coming from and not have an answer to where 10,000 gallons of water came from with no flood. That was the other piece to the puzzle. Have we had any other incidents with new meters? That We've got one that we're sending off to be tested again, too, because of somebody had used water and it's unexplainable. Was, was it similar in amount? Or not as much as that one, no, okay. but it is higher than what they're used to paying. With that being said, the meter has physically been read, correct? Mm -hmm. It's physically yes. impossible for a meter to, without water going through it, to move. It can't happen. It's all mechanisms in there that happen. Water has to be going through it to get it to spin. Does that mean it couldn't grab two numbers at once and spin it? I Right. But the meter was tested at that time. It was it was working correctly. So. Yeah. And it just was convenient that it was exactly seven days after the new meter was put in that this happened. I had asked our meter text too if, um, like a gasket, when you put a new meter all together, if it could have not seated right and leaked. But that would still be a mess. And I can't see if it was going to go out, like that much either. And I asked, I asked too as well, I'm like, did, did I pay for everybody in our cul-de-sac's water? Um, I mean, did anybody else in the cul-de-sac have issues um, with their water bill this month? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I would have to check everybody's account to find out. Because I, I doubt anybody's going to complain that their water bill was less. It, it could yeah. do that. I mean, it has to go through okay. the meters coming in. It's going right. out to you. It's not going anywhere else okay. as far as that goes. But okay. Yeah, I understand your frustration. It was frustrating for us, too, to try mm -hmm. to figure out what possibly could be using that much water. Right. Would it make sense that we they, they consider putting in a different meter there? We did. We got a whole different meter in there now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we had to put a new one in when we started the other all the testing. Okay, and that one's still in there? Yes. Well, man, just to keep things moving along, what are you asking this body to do? I just, I just can't figure paying this bill if nobody can explain where 10,000 gallons of water went. That was my thing. So, so are you asking for an adjustment? Or are you asking yes. But if, I mean, if that, I mean, I don't want to go over the board. I mean, if you guys are saying that's not possible, I don't want, I don't want to say that. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not asking for things that are not possible. I mean, if, if you guys say that that's how you guys run things, then that's how for things are run. I will pay the bill. Um, but that is what I came for, yes. So you notice that you had a large amount of water, and then did it shut off by itself before or after the meter was pulled? Well, you could tell by the daily usage that it shut off roughly around 11 o'clock Monday. So before you even pulled off the meter and had it tested? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. So that, to me, kind of would indicate that there was something running and that it wasn't running. Um, now, I would have had more concern if it was still running and then you pulled it out. And then it went away, but it clearly stopped at its own before the meter was pulled out. So that seems to throw some money in. Mm -hmm. So the issue with the board is whether or not they wish to, uh, wish to issue an adjustment pursuant to the board's policy that shields.
she is, has no clue where that water went. There's no evidence of any water going anywhere besides the, the reading on the meter what and the hour of consumption. I'm sorry, what did your plumbers tell you? Everything checked out. Everything was fine. They checked. I mean, they checked off all, and I have I have all the paperwork. Joe Springmeyer called um, oh, Helmick, I forget his name, um, something Helmick, and he checked off everything. Um, and, we, and we have a basement, so if something happened upstairs, uh, our basement would be flooded, and it wasn't flooded. Um, now, granted, this was after I received the high bill that he called the plumber, but. Do you have an outdoor spigot? For a hose? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, of course. It's, uh, it's right by our pool. Do you have any other outdoor spigots? Mm -hmm. just, there's just one. Just the one by the pool? By the pool. And it's in, an, it's in a fence. So. so it's not accessible from anywhere outside? So. No. And right. it's, a, it's blocked right now. It's still water. I know. I don't know what the policy says what it says. Yeah. I, 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 I wish we could do something, but I think we're bound by our policy. There have been times when we've been able to make adjustments uh, because we have bad issues. Find something we're often glad to adjust and do what we can do. Okay. So, for now, I, I believe the record can reflect that the Mr. Story has called the vote and I wanted to move to, to, uh, to do these sort of adjustments. So, unfortunately, I think that's where you go. You know, so okay. But Find something else out. I'm sure the board would be happy to reconsider their position. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Well, I mean, the, the only way you would have to is if there was some sort of redemption period. But, but at this point, if you took it in the 50s, frankly, you want to buy like, just the common law. So there wouldn't be anybody else that you'd have to offer to. You have to make it clear you can get rid of it if you want to. But you can simply take it. By condemnation in the 1950s, yeah, I think so. But I mean, I mean, at, at this point, you own it by uh, just possession. <laughs> That's over 20 years. I mean, uh, common law, common law possession says you can take this property if you own it for over 20 years without anybody contesting it. We've have they ever had it appraised as far as sale price, Rick? Or? No, the last time we talked about was possibly logging it and getting the logs off of it and then putting it up for sale maybe, but there's no way to get to the logs without, you know, going through neighbors' property. You would ask the neighbors for permission to yes. access? Yes. Um, the guy had uh, 
cruiser. Uh, Brian Cruiser, I met with him out there, I met with DNR out there, and actually Mr. Holland, we all met out there, and Cruiser approached the, the uh, neighbors to, to get on the property and didn't fly. So that's where it all comes to Cruiser Hall. I don't know, it's been a while since I've looked at it. If you want to map it and look at it again, see if there's a way to get, get rid of it. But generally speaking, you own it that long, you own it. 60 years. You're only 40. I'm only 40. <laughs> when does this lease do, Greg? Uh, April, I believe. Uh, 90% uh, plant specs for the brick 